From the Forest of Dean Family Trail in England. Welcome to the G N Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. And it's our 300th it show. Is. So coming up this week, our happy riders, quicker than grumpy riders, plus Hank gets extreme at the Red Hook Crit in Milan. Meanwhile, poor old Oscar Pujo is having his KOM stolen by Alberto Contador, <laughs> poor lad. Wow, the 300th show, what's amazing, Ollie, is how little the GCN show has changed in all that time. Welcome to the Global Cycling Network. You're watching the Global Cycling Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the penultimate GCN news show. At least it was news when we shot this video. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that American pro cycling could have an unlikely savior. Former doper and now seller of dope, Floyd Landis, is using the money that he got as a payout in the Lance Armstrong case to fund a professional cycling team. And we also learned that while Parry Tours got, well, more extreme, still got nothing on the Red Hook crit. No. Wow, I really can't wait to see the full video from the Red Hook crew, I must admit. Uh, also this week, coming onto our radar, was a really interesting piece of research with a very catchy title, it has to be said. You ready for it? Oh, I'm ready. The influence of pleasure and attentional focus on the pacing and performance strategies in elite individual time trials. Good one. Yeah, stick with us, it is more interesting than it sounds. In essence, it says that pleasure has a direct effect on your ability to pace and effort. So, in essence, if you're happy and you know it, um, you'll be able to, well, ride faster. So, happy cyclists are faster and grumpy cyclists are, well, slower. Mm -hmm. The research was done by a group of French scientists, amongst them the legendary coach Fred Grapp, and done on a group of pro cyclists at a very high level race. Now, given that they are pro cyclists, you would imagine that there's not much of a variability amongst them. So perhaps attitude and mood are even more important for us regular cyclists. Yeah, but the research does stop short of suggesting why uh, pleasure has an effect on performance, but previous studies have suggested explanations. For example, that a negative frame of mind can increase feelings of fatigue and reduce vigor. Mm. On top of that, negative moods are often associated with a focus on previous negative experiences, uh, which then leads to basically a reduction in the perception that you have of your own ability. So you would think then in the context of cycling, a hard and difficult effort, then there's very much the chance that a bad mood is going to significantly affect your output. And finally, a negative mood requires more effort to regulate than other moods. So it reduces the capacity for other types of regulation, such as physical performance, i.e. it makes you more tired and it's harder to sustain. So there you go. A few possible reasons why grumpy cyclists are indeed slowing themselves down. I know what you're doing right now. You're there contemplating whether or not you are a grumpy cyclist. Well, coming up, a few of the telltale signs. Firstly, cycling Tourette's. Would you just stop moaning? Absolutely hate people that shout. Are you the person who, out on the group ride, shouts at all of your riding buddies? You know the one. You're all riding along peacefully in a group, and then out of nowhere, hold the wheel! Yeah, shout at some poor soul a few wheels in front just because they can't quite hold the wheel in front of them. Yeah, or they forgot to point out a pothole. Yeah, or because the pace is just a little bit too fast. Or, because it's too slow. Well, if you do any of these, then you might be a grumpy cyclist. And there's more examples, aren't there? If you're the type of person that goes up a climb, you're thinking more about the grade, about how long the climb's going up for, how hard it is, how much pain there are in your legs, then possibly you're a grumpy cyclist. Or you might be complaining because the road surface is rubbish. Or you might be complaining because it's Windy, um, and you, I'm including you in that, although you would, uh, well, you sort of, you didn't really shout or compare, you just cried. I did actually, yeah. 
Yeah, I once cried into a headwind because <laughs> I couldn't maintain 20 miles per hour average speed. It was a long time ago though. Uh, in all seriousness, during my career, having thought back, back about it, I did generally perform better when I was in a happier mood generally in life. So that's not just within the cycling life, it's in the external life, social life, family life, etc. If that was all happy, I generally performed a little bit better, I would say. Yeah. And I would also go as far to say that the team environment makes a huge difference. So if everybody in a team gets along really well and you've got that motivation and that momentum, you have a really good season. So you're pretty miserable then most of the time. I know what you're trying to say there. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I, those yeah. were those were performances from a happy Dan what, Lloyd. What it team just, was? What were you most happy on? Wow, it's funny you should ask that. Yeah, uh, Ollie, yeah. probably the Cervelo testing. Huh. We all got along great. Oh. Yeah. It's not all bad for grumpy cyclists, though, somewhat ironically, considering your attitude. There is light at the end of the tunnel, even if you're too pessimistic to notice. Swearing makes you faster. Yeah, the aforementioned cycling Tourette's could actually be good for you as a cyclist, couldn't you? Uh, this was from research done at the University of Kiel in the UK, where they found that participants produced an extra 24 watts if they swore whilst they were doing that effort. Now it's compared to the using like a neutral word, like sausage or something. So you, if you're grumpy and swear a lot, you ride faster. Yes, although important to note that that was on peak power, so in a sprint. So I guess the ultimate emotional pacing strategy would be to be happy for the vast majority of your ride and then get really grumpy and angry for that final sprint. Yeah, sort of like Cav then, just effing and jeffing in the sprint and probably why he's so good. Seems to work for him, doesn't it? I'm not sure he's happy the first bit though. <laughs> All it makes me think though is that I'm just, well, disappointed now that the uh, pro race season is well, nearly over. It is, isn't it? Bring on the Tour Down Under. It's not too far away now, is it? I talk of racing. You were over in Milan at the weekend, yeah. weren't you, with James Losley Williams, yeah. Hank, who was competing at the Red Hook Crit, wasn't he? Did yeah. he get angry? Well, I think we should cue the video and then you can see. Let's have a look. Thanks, guys. Myself and James are here at the Red Hook Crit in Milan because James has actually been racing the event. Yes, so I'm here. I don't know what you guys have put me up to because, well, it's absolute carnage. I've seen more people in bandages than anywhere I've been, but I managed to qualify in the heats, 11th. Pretty good, I think. And then, yeah, so I'm in the final tonight at 9.30. And I think the whole video is coming up soon on this channel. Yeah, it's been raining as well, we should point out, which has made it even more challenging. So fair play, but it's a great atmosphere here. So yeah, as James says, stay tuned for a video coming out on the channel very soon. And uh, we'll see you later. It's now time for cycling shorts. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Floyd Landis is making a return to the peloton. Using money that he got in his whistleblowing lawsuit against Lance Armstrong, he's going to be setting up a UCI Continental team. He is. He won't be riding for them, of course, but he says that he feels like he owes the sport. You can understand why. And that this is the perfect vehicle in which to put something back. Uh, so he will step in as the lead sponsor with the name Floyds of Leadville for Silver Pro Cycling. And that was a team that was due to fold at the end of this year. Yeah, so Lance Armstrong settled the case for five million and as the chief whistleblower, Floyd Landis was allocated a portion of that money. Once he'd cleared his legal fees, he's now got a remaining $750,000 which he's going to be putting in to set up this team. Now, he told Vela News, at the end of the day, if this can bring some closure to that whole episode and actually benefit some young kids at the same time, then that's some satisfaction. Mm, I think it was an admirable gesture, and I said as much on Twitter, as you might expect with Twitter, not everybody agreed with me. But then, what do you actually want him to do with that 750,000? He could just keep it himself, I guess, or he could help out a Canadian pro team. Uh, so I think that was a great gesture, personally. Uh, talking of new teams, there was another new one announced last week uh, that it won't be starting until 2020. This is the Global Cycling Project. Great name for a team, I think you'll agree. The difference with this team is that their aim is to become the first ever Chinese World Tour squad. Uh, their tagline, bridging the gap between Asia and Europe. And despite the name, the Global Cycling Project, it's got absolutely nothing to do with us. Probably means it'll be quite successful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see, and it could well work out, especially considering the current economic climate in China, which is really good. And, 
Well, of interest to hardcore fans, it's got Shane Sutton, the former head of British Cycling, at the helm. So, you know. Yeah, apparently already over at Chinese Cycling Federation, yeah. which I didn't know before last week. Uh, moving on, some really good news for us European cyclists because we are about to get a lot more powerful. Unfortunately, we're not going to be suddenly raising our FTPs, uh, but there's some new legislation from the EU regarding e-bikes. Apparently, soon, we'll be allowed e-bikes with motors of up to 1,000 watts. And also, you don't even have to pedal them. You can use a throttle. So, so just basically motorbikes then? Effectively, yes. There's a couple of key differences in that you don't need to wear a helmet and that you can use them uh, on bike lanes because that maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour still applies. But nevertheless, uh, there's gonna be some acceleration there. It seems like a strange ruling at first, but it's been done to encourage people to use e-bikes for more day-to-day -day tasks such as shopping and commuting. And if you're really, really, really into doing a lot of shopping, I know what you should get a three-wheeled e-bike because then the maximum capacity of the motor in your e-bike can be up to 4,000 watts. 4,000 watts? Yes. Imagine the acceleration I on know. that. On a related note, coming out of Paris, there's news that once a month, the centre of Paris is going to be traffic free to promote cycling That's on those roads. Cool. And there's going to be over 900 cameras to try and stop and catch drivers that park in cycle lanes. Yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't well, it? Yeah, that made me very happy when mm. I read that. Yeah. Uh, changing tack completely to another subject, Alberto Comstor has been back in the headlines last week uh, because he took the Strava KOM up the famous Bola del Mundo climb he near to Madrid. It. Uh, didn't just smash it, he really smashed it. 90 seconds he took off the previous best. Yeah, and that previous best was of interest to us here at GCN because it was held by none other than Oscar Pujol, of FN en Espanol. It was indeed. We were sat just opposite Oscar when the poor lad got a notification through on his phone and you could visibly see the ends of his moustache beginning to droop, couldn't you? I think he's going to be faster though now because there was a lot of like Spanish swear words as well. He's yeah. going back for revenge. Yeah. We totally Spanish, nailed Spanish the pronunciation by that. So we had a little bit of a break there after our fist bump. Uh, moving on to cyclocross now. Uh, that resumed in Europe this last weekend with the Brico Cross Series. Mulebeke on Saturday and Ronce on Sunday. Matthew van der Poel won both on the men's side of things. Wout van Aert, the world champion, in second place on both days. Uh, that's four races, four second places for the world champion so far. Whilst on the women's side of things, Sanna Kant, the world champion, took the win on Saturday and Mariana Voss on Sunday. Don't forget, we have almost an entire season of Cyclocross live over on our Facebook page. So make sure you set some time aside every Saturday and Sunday. And finally, Jenny Graham enters the final leg of her world record attempt, having covered so far 16,664 miles. She's just entered Europe and she started, well, way back in June. She did indeed. Her aim is to beat the record for the circumnavigation of the globe, both the regular category and also the unassisted category. For the latter, you need to be able to prove that you've ridden a minimum distance of 18,000 miles uh, and always going in the same direction, i.e. west to east, although why you'd want to go in a different direction when you're trying to get around the globe as fast as possible, I don't know. Anyway, she's been on the road now for 115 days and we wish Jenny the best of luck uh, in the remainder. Yeah, good luck, Jenny. I think the best thing to do is to cycle around the globe the opposite way to which it's spinning then it just moves underneath you like a treadmill and it's easier she wish she'd wish she'd known that before she set off yeah it's the giveaway section of the show now we've got a brand new giveaway for you this week uh, shortly we'll be announcing the five very lucky winners of the oakley flight jackets from last week's show uh, first up this week's is from our friends at continental tires yeah, so we have got three pairs of black Urban GP tyres and also three pairs of tan sidewalled GP Urban tyres. We have, and for the latter in particular, this is a great opportunity because they are limited edition, the tan wall tyres, and currently only available to German residents through the Continental website. So if you win them and you're elsewhere in the world, you're probably going to be the only person in your country to have them. Yeah, pretty exclusive prize. And the keen-eyed among you may remember or have noticed that these tyres were actually on the Schindelhauer bikes we used in some urban cycling content back in August. They were, indeed. Uh, as ever, the details on how to enter this giveaway are in a link provided in the description below this video. Best of luck to you all. Those with the luck then from last week were 
winning the Oakley flight jackets in the colour of their choice. Alan Bigwood from here in the UK. Uh, Gavin Tan from SG. You looked that up where that was, Singapore. Yeah, We Singapore. thought it was Senna Gould to start with. <laughs> and then three winners from the USA. Jeremy Gord, Robert Ballanthin, and Christy Linder. Well done to all of you. We will be in contact very shortly indeed. And I'm quite jealous. It's now time for our weekly inspiration, where you submit your inspirational cycling photos for a chance to win 50, 75, or 100 pounds in vouchers from our mates at Wiggle. Yeah, you can spend on absolutely anything you want over at the Wiggle online shop. Uh, thanks to Wiggle for sponsoring this segment each and every week. Without further ado, let's announce the third place person this week. Uh, winner of 50 pounds in vouchers is Sonia. Uh, this is, is her Live Envy over at Charnwood Forest in Leicestershire. Autumn, of course, on its way here in the UK, and that is a perfect example of that. Yeah, I love the golden color palette in that picture and I've actually ridden through Charmwood Forest. Have well. you really? Looks yeah. absolutely uh, lovely over there doesn't it? We downgraded it to third because we think we've got a hunch there might have been a bit of editing or some sort of filter going on there but nevertheless I do like that photo. Yeah a bit like a constable painting. Uh, next picture uh, is Danny L Gordon in second place who first and foremost I really like that he's referred to his bike as the battle cruiser. That's, uh, that's pretty amusing yeah. <laughs> but that's just an amazing adventure sort of scene, isn't it? I mean, it just looks absolutely yeah. spectacular. Over in Iceland, and again, the perfect example of where a bike can get you in the world. That does look like a great adventure. 75 pounds going to you, uh, Danny. First place this week, though, over to D Dylan over on Instagram, using the all-important hashtag GCN Inspiration. Uh, this, he says, is a nice ride to end the season, just in time to see the final of the World Championships. That doesn't actually say where it is, but that is a beautiful looking Wait, it says road. there, Mar Markermere. Well, that's where he's from, but I'm guessing it's up in the Netherlands then somewhere. It looks yeah. rather flat, doesn't it? But it also looks rather inspirational, which is what this segment's all about. Yeah, well, it, it, I'll tell you what, it, for me, the linear perspective on that tree-lined street is reminiscent of the Dutch Golden Age and painted from the uh, 1600s, Mind Heart Herberna. Yeah, I was just thinking exactly the same thing on yeah. it, if I'm perfectly yeah. honest. Uh, yeah, reminder, hashtag GCN inspiration, GCN inspiration, should I say, uh, is what you should use on Instagram. The alternative, uh, which is where our third place came in this week, that being Sonia, uh, is to upload it using the upload. There's a link in the description below this video. Uh, we look at all of those each week and on GCN inspiration on Instagram. There's some crackers. It's quite hard to choose the top three. It isn't is. It? I really enjoy it though, mm. looking at them. There's some great photos. Yeah, so make sure you continue submitting. Time now for Tech of the Week, so let's head over to John in the tech studio who's got a new bike and some 30th anniversary zip wheels. Cheers guys, well this week we've got a super stealth e-bike, we've got a bike that we should take a look at, plus we've got disc wheels, we've got the world's lightest production road bike, <laughs> and there's loads more, so make sure you tune in on Thursday. Yeah, don't miss out. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now. Uh, we'll start with this one from Twitter where James Matthew Bay has used the hashtag GCN hack. Couldn't afford a Peloton bike trainer, so I made my own. I'm gonna say hack. There's a couple of bits I like about this. Firstly, he must have taken quite some time in choosing the correct paint color uh, on the stand there to match his green bike. Either that or he painted them both at the same time. Uh, also, I love the step there to aid in mounting and dismounting his bike. It reminds me uh, of some places in the New Forest where there are gates and there's a big step there for the horse riders to get on and off. Yeah, I think, make it easier. I think that's a hack. He's used genuine joining methods there and not just gaffer tape, <laughs> so that's, that's a hack in my book. Yeah, well done, James. Uh, moving on. Uh, yeah, we have this from Marwan. Um, and, well, I mean, it, it's, it's a bit, I'm not really, totally sure what it is, but it looks like he's made lost a... the words, Ollie. Oh, well, yeah, it's sort of like a, a recumbent from an upside-down little BMX that is then been created into a drifting bike that just looks great fun to... It looks to like it around. has the potential to be great fun. Uh, in fact, yeah. Marwan himself said, I'd definitely like to try this. It came over from France. Yeah, well, it's, it's bodge, do you reckon? I don't know. Well, it's hard to know before, before seeing it in action, I think it? it's a prototype hack. Yeah, let's go with that, <laughs> yeah. let's go with that. Uh, next up, Darren says, I have long, narrow feet. Are they long and narrow? If they're long and narrow, Darren, then I dread to think what you'd think mine were like. Yeah, anyway, uh, I've never had success with the Boa Dial tightening system. Simply can't tighten them the necessary amount. So remove my Boa Dials and replace them with shoelaces, uh, turning my shoes into lace-ups. 
Well, would laces really help uh, more than a boa dial? I mean, boa dials are pretty good in my yeah. experience. Like, uh, well, if it works, it was a hack, but I'm going to say bodge. Yeah, Sorry. bodge. Sorry about that, Darren. Next up, uh, we had this one coming in from Gurav. Yeah, so he says that uh, this guy's a traveling knife sharpener and salesman, and he's able to sharpen knives using this amazing improvisation on his bike. And, you know, he's used his bike to turn it into a source of livelihood, which is, that's, well, that's a hack, I'd say. It's yeah. pretty impressive. I've been serious for a few moments, uh, seeing some of the bikes that have been modified over in Zambia when it when went over last year and were used for their livelihoods. Uh, it makes me never want to say bodge ever again because yeah. for some people, they really need to maintain any equipment they've got because it is their livelihood. Uh, that guy's name uh, that's doing the sharpening is Rample. And that's that nice. is a definite hack. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, next up, uh, this from Zach. Um, first of all, uh, oh sorry, my Shimano R550 cleats broke. Just needed a few more sessions over the next week in my lead up to Ironman Louisville as the weather has been terrible. Uh, I have a new pedal in order, but in the meantime, a few rubber bands seem to have done the trick. I think as a, as a way to get you home in an emergency, that is a hack. Mm. But as a permanent long-term solution, it's a bodge. Well, it's not long-term, but it's, it's a couple of weeks by the sounds of it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, well, Wiggle do next day delivery, so it's a bodge. Yeah, we, we're being a little bit indecisive here. <laughs> aren't we? So, well, we're going to say bodge for that one. Apologies for that. Uh, finally, we have this from Off The Chain Creations. Sounds like a commercial enterprise there, if you yeah. ask me. Uh, anyway, they have modified a pair of shades with a chain as the arms down the side. You wouldn't want to receive an impact at the side of your head, would you? Like yeah. a football or something? Yeah, uh, uh, one of those chain pins. Mm. Entering your temple is not going to be the, the, the nicest thing. <laughs> anyway, so definitely something different. I mean, I wouldn't wear them because, um, well, I frankly couldn't carry them off, to be perfectly honest. Mm. But I'm sure somebody would. Uh, actually, we are going to finish the day with your very own hack, aren't we, Ollie? And we're going to ask you at home to decide whether it's a hack or a bodge. Yeah, so many of you have picked up on this in the comment section for this video. But in the Everesting uh, Challenge video, it can be seen that there is a GoPro um, attached to the front of my bike using a large amount of red uh, tape. Now, keen eyed among yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the, the reason for this was uh, we didn't have uh, a GoPro mount that could fit on the integrated Canyon bar, and we didn't have, we'd run out of sticky mounts. So, the well, the crew decided to tape it on. So, yeah, hack or bodge. You, 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 decide. you decide. And if you'd like to sub submit any hacks or budgets for next week's show, the hashtag is GCNHack. Or again, you can use the uploader. It's now time for the caption competition. It is. Last week's photo was this one of newly crowned junior world road race champion Remco at Vinnepool. Uh, we have a winner. Boys850 wrote in with caption, Remco's girlfriend loves Skittles so much, she had to catch the rainbow, taste the rainbow. <laughs> I think they whisper it, don't they, on the advert for Skittles? Yeah, and then if it was an advert for Skittles, then one of them would just turn into Skittles. Oh, you know the adverts well. Yeah, I do. Anyway, uh, well done to you, boy. Uh, we will get this bottle out to you as soon as we possibly can if you send us your address as a message on Facebook. Uh, the caption photo for this week uh, to get stuck into is this one from the podium of the Giro della Emilia on Saturday. Uh, DeMarchi there winning from Rigoberto Ran and Dylan Churns. I'm going to get you started. Yeah, yeah, what you got? I don't need an umbrella because I'm the reigning champion. That's pretty. That's, your captions have got a lot better since I joined. They have, yeah. That's good, that. It's nothing to do with you joining, but it's oh. just coincidental. Anyway, let us know uh, what your caption is in the comment section down below, and it's your chance to win a G-Sync Camelback water bottle. As ever, we're going to go through a few of our favourite comments from the last week before we tell you what's on the channel this coming week. Uh, this week, we're going to start with this from E. Rapestra. Yeah. Um, just loved your impression, Ollie, of Peter Sagan. Actually, yeah. you're not alone, uh, Mr. Repster or Mrs. Repster, because Ollie actually really likes his own impression of Peter Sagan, don't you? Very pleased. For me, this is a good comment. <laughs> yeah, let's relive the moment in the video. <laughs> I'm going to do my uh, Peter Sagan impression, which is, uh, for me, he's a very good climb. He's uh, not too steep. He's just been laughing at himself, even though he's already watched it 10 times. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Justin Becker, who commented saying on the GCN Tech Show, that music during the screw ride upgrades, buy upgrades segment, 
almost had me in tears. Shit. But Rue is up against Jason from Melbourne, Australia. What does Jason have in his locker? And finally, this from Peter Sumner underneath our top coolest riders of all time, Gino Bartali. He bluffed his way through Nazi checkpoints across Italy carrying resistance documents in his bike frame and on one occasion a wagon with a hidden compartment with Jewish refugees inside all the way to Switzerland. He did all this wearing his racing jersey to help him avoid arrest. He was a hero and a legend and never told any one of his deeds during his life and they were only discovered after he died. He won two tours, three Giri, seven monuments and many many other races. If that isn't cool then I have absolutely no idea what is. It's quite hard to argue. It, uh, with I mean, seriously, point there. Cool. you can make a film of that. Someone should make a film of that. Yeah. That'd be amazing. I sort of feel like we should pull the video down, and just do top top coolest cyclists of all time, only about Gino uh, Bartali. Yeah. Anyway, coming up on the channel this week uh, on Wednesday, Emma is posing the question: How important, really? is power to weight ratio. Uh, Thursday, we've got our top 10 ergogenic aid. What supplements can you take? Legally, of course, that could help you make uh, go faster on the bike. And on Friday, uh, it's the next episode of Ask GC Anything. On Saturday, we've got a video of how to fuel on the bike. And on Sunday, it's gonna take a long time to edit, but we're gonna try and get out James's Red Hook video. So stay tuned for that, because I think it's gonna be great. And then on Monday, the GCN Race News Show, and on Tuesday, back again. Mm. It's going to be a long PCN edit show. Uh, because Real. there's a lot of content to edit, not because James was fluffing all of his uh, pieces to camera, <laughs> was it? He, he, he was pretty good. Yeah. We're coming towards the end of the show now, unfortunately. Uh, we'd like to give a quick shout out to our very own shop, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Uh, for us, and indeed for many of you, winter is well on its way now. Uh, so if you want to make sure that you stay nice and warm and snug and comfortable, we've got a full range over on the shop that will help you out from that perspective. In fact, many of you will have seen our presenters using that exact kit over in Outer Badia recently, including yourself, Ollie. That you rate it, don't you? Oh yeah, it's great. I mean, well, when I did the Everest thing, Fortunately, I didn't need the full winter kit, but I was wearing warmers and the insulated gilet. That was, well, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Breathable, comfortable. Yeah, an awesome kit. Yeah, he's been beating it up to me. I haven't actually worn it yet because, uh, well, I haven't ridden my bike much for a couple of weeks now. Anyway, I'll wait till the winter. Uh, for those of you where it's still quite warm, don't forget there's a full range of fan kit, which is also great value. So something for everybody over there, and it really helps us out. Uh, incidentally, thanks for the overwhelmingly positive reviews that you've been leaving us over there recently. Very much appreciated. And finally, it's time for Extreme Corner. So, James has been getting seriously extreme over at the Red Hook Crit in Milan. Check this out. Oh, certainly looks dangerous, isn't it? I'm yeah. surprised he stayed up. In fact, he didn't stay up, right, did he? No, he didn't. All will be revealed once the full video is out, hopefully on Saturday, but if not, the following week. All right, that's the end of this week's GCN show. Thank you all very much for watching. Now, you will have noticed through this video that Ollie has been banging on and on and on about his Everesting attempt. Uh, I was going to throw to a different video, but he's persuaded me to throw to his own from yesterday. <laughs> uh, find out whether or not he managed to climb 8,848 meters. Yeah, in the video, which is just down here.